Hello everyone, I am Zia Tiptara. Today I am up with a new creature that actually look like a... I want to base it on some sort of a exoskeleton uh, creature. Uh, maybe some sort of crab or insect or something. So, uh, and it will use those exoskeleton as an armor. And first, I need to come up with a really nice shape. So I want it to have like a really long arm and then a uh, hunchback sort of so it can have like some sort of shell on top of it and it would wear some sort of helmet with no eyes so now i'm just trying to figure out the whole shape of the creature with the shell on it and sometime i would draw and a lot of time i would draw if i don't really know what i want it to look like because i want to have a bit more ideas with line drawn you can uh, insert more idea with something especially if you are trying to make something that you don't usually make you don't really know what it's going to be uh, what's inside the silhouette but sometimes if you see me start off with a silhouette meaning that i usually know what's going to be inside it uh, or uh, if i don't then i will sketch it out on the uh, sketchbook separated from um, the computer or the, the canvas on the computer so now as you can see i draw and I erase and you know I try to figure out how long his leg would be and what the foot should look like basically uh, because you can't silhouette can't tell you like if the foot uh, have how many toes coming which direction right so silhouette would just be kind of flat uh, and you can have to figure out uh, by adding form to the silhouette but in the drawing you can figure out by just drawing line and uh, creating so basically all these things uh, creating silhouette line drawn or whatever are basically just some to kind of uh, put down your ideas so you know exactly what they look like because if you don't um, then it's going to be a problematic as you move on to try to create something so the drawing or the, the silhouette is not so much as the you translating your idea down into a more solid uh, image or so now I settle on the line and I merge the line into one layer and make it multiply and then I make another layer in between the line and the background and select like mid um, sort of mid gray about 50 60 whatever the mid gray is and just fill in the whole silhouette and from this silhouette, I can just make selection and adding uh, light and shadow and some texture on top of the silhouette. Then I will have my creatures. But now I'm just trying to fill in the silhouette. Make sure you fill in the silhouette along with a uh, tiny little spike uh, as much as you can. You need to get all the information there uh, because. So the first, the first layer of the silhouette I made it just for the whole body. And then I'll make another layer and this one is going to be the extra arm that coming out from the side of his face or the side of the head and this one will be on top so it will be on the front layer I might use a little bit darker uh, value so that you can kind of see it stand out and then I'm going to make another layer on the back and um, paint it tails uh, you can pick a different value also or you can pick the same value but uh, when I make it on a separate uh, layer I could take it out later and that's the advantage of making it on different layer if you're not sure if you're gonna keep certain part of the body right so now I turn down the uh, darkness of the line a bit so that uh, the line will get less dark by lower the opacity then I make another layer normal layer on top of everything and trying to um, create the form on this guy and just think about how light would affect on this whole form basically so um, you should be able to uh, identify what form you're dealing with and all these forms are basically geometry and um, they are the arms are cylinder the uh, part of the chest are facing down so it's gonna get shadow and the part of the the top is kind of like a spherical with um, the form sphere <laughs> and then you have a light from top so and then on the bottom part as if it's further out i will push it into the shadow a little bit because it's probably be covered by the top part of the body so now i think we have enough detail or information that we could move on to the next step 
So the next step is I'm just going to look at the, where it should be and I'm going to get the color that are similar to whatever that I that is in the scene. So I'm going to merge everything down into one layer, uh, excluding the line, uh, but just you know have the ball in one layer. It should be easier to paint. So I'm just going to merge the body down. I might separate the small hand or the small arm. And I'm just going to erase uh, some part on the hand because I want the hand to be skin. I don't want it to be a separate shell. Then I merge everything down. And then um, that will be the smaller hands. And this will be the tail. Just in case I still have this tail separate and the hand separate. Just in case I want to get rid of the tail or the hands or whatever. The smaller hand on the side of the head. Now I am going to use, let's see, overlay. And just fill in the green and just tone the opacity down to whatever how much green you want how many saturation you want um, I think this is kind of good enough green then I'm going to change the color of the hands I'm gonna erase it because I want the hand and the face to be a different color maybe a, a lighter skin color basically um, erase that a little bit but don't erase the whole thing leave some green there because it needs to kind of mix in with uh, the color of the skin also because uh, the, the green shell will have a reflection uh, the color will reflect on that and it's kind of like it will help tidying the color together to create a color harmony so now I'm painting some uh, lighter skin color sort of like pinkish hue uh, to make it kind of you know ghostly gross and kind of super pale uh, sort of thing maybe a little translucent and I have one of the nails to be black or maybe dark red uh, something like that dark sharp make it look uh, like a harder object and on the skin you um, try to make it look like a softer surface object so there's hard surface and there's soft surface so when you're painting on a hard surface uh, usually you use a harder edge brush and on a softer surface, it's probably going to try to make it softer transition and rounder. So it make it look soft. On a harder surface, a hard edge will help you create a harder surface. All right. So now I'm doing the same thing, making another overlay on top of this smaller arm here. And trying to uh, create the, the green on the arm. And then on the hand itself, it will be uh, the skin color. So I turned that overlay layer off that has a red and now I'm just using normal layer painting on top of this uh, body layer and just adding more detail and then going to try to add a more solid light and shadow. But the light and shadow now it looks fine. Um, it's you know not too contrast. I tend to keep this one as a pretty limited range of value because we are going to add the uh, directional lighting from the top down later on uh, so just adding more detail on the spike make sure uh, all the value and all the value range all the light and shadow make sure it's, it's it's in the correct place if you have it in the right location of the light and shadow it should be fine like when I'm doing spike here the bottom part of the spike will be dark and the top part will be light like you know which side just you have to identify the face or the, the side of the object and then the face that's facing down will be dark and the face facing up will be light and then the, the part that will be more contrast is going to be the smaller arm as you can see in the uh, in the end it will have more contrast and the, the lighter part will hit from the top so basically um, we just basically for the body here you all I need to do is just cleaning up and adding more detail like spike and make sure the silhouette looks good make sure the shape of the whole body looks good um, and make sure that the light and shadow is correct but in terms of what you need at this moment in terms of a uh, value you don't need any much more than this at the moment you're just using the existing value and trying to add detail like what i'm doing here uh, use like the value that's there and adding the light and shadow there and do it throughout the body as you add as you want to add more detail and it will look just fine all right as far as the next step go this is uh, basically 
pretty much similar to what we have with the exception of I add more detail onto the you know the um, tentacle here and more detail onto the arm and everything else and it still kind of look slightly flat because we use a control value environment right so it's not the value is not too contrast and not too light not too dark and just keep doing this to the whole body which uh, it will be shown to you later on in video but it will be without voiceover but um, basically we're just going to keep uh, rendering these to up to this point basically the same thing that we did earlier to uh, the last part of the video that we just watched and then um, I'm going to increase the level a little bit here not much just slightly a little bit right not change much at all um, but the key part is um, I did that level last but I add the lighting on top of it first so the lighting on top and it's not contrast enough so I double down on the overlay so now it looks more three-dimensional and you have to know which face is facing up and the face that face up is going to be the lightest and then I add a little bit of highlight onto the edge of all these uh, maybe spike the edge of the arm the edge of the the back of their legs or something and then I do another color balance pass on top of it and increase the level slightly bit more and then uh, in the last part I cleaned up the rest and add a bit more light onto here because the light poly passed through the body and hit the knees pass through the body and hit the knees so this is basically the final um, actually this one because it doesn't have the light it, this one I eliminated the light on the legs but the final one is basically this one here in the, in the folder all right guys thank you very much for your support and i hope this video tutorial will find your way to you and help you with your rendering skill and creature design skill uh, whatever you might be doing you can use this rules or this tutorial for uh, uh, use this, the same method or the, the same way that we're making creatures and directional lighting is can be pretty cool because you can build it up from you know using uh, typical uh, base without the light and then you can create directional lighting from whichever side you want top right left or from behind so basically uh, that's the advantage of painting in the control value or limited value or basically low key or you can do high key and add shadow kind of like, like that's the reverse of what we do here but there is many ways to to do this thing and this is one of the easiest way to get the directional lighting uh, because if you start directional lighting from the beginning uh, it will make it a lot harder for you because if you messed up in some spot you're gonna have to uh, repaint the whole thing basically right all right guys well thank you very much for your support